Hi guys, my name is Mickey Mouse. Sorry, Skull Clown can't be here. Mainly because he got kicked out of YouTube. Yeah, he got kicked out of YouTube. Now I'm here. Now I gotta do reviews. So, uh, uh, yeah. Since YouTube is trying to do stuff to the product now, it has to be PG. So, yeah, I'm here. Um, it kind of sucks that Skull Clown's not here. Um, well, YouTube forced me to do this. Don't. Don't. They don't pay me enough to do this. Damn it. Yes, I said damn it. I was born in the 50s. Fuck you. Hm. Anyways, let's review Gotham. Season 1 and 2. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, shit. I mean, for real, if YouTube wants to kick me out, they can email me or call me. Literally, they don't have to, like, take away my channel, because, you know, that won't be fair. That makes no sense. If you're going to take away my channel, at least, at least speaking, oh, I don't know, notify me before you take it away. Shit. Don't be like, well, I'm going to take it away. No, don't. Don't do that. So, I'm going to review this, because it's been a long time coming, and, you know what, just get the fuck out of my seat. Okay, fine. I get out of your seat. Bitch. Hello, YouTube fans. This is the Skull Clown. Fans, this is the Skull Clown. Here to review Gotham Seasons 1 and 2. And, obviously, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're new, Welcome to the Scar Clowns channel where you can feel you can feel what you want to feel. If you hate my videos, then you hate my videos. If you feel offended with my videos, then you feel offended with my videos. If you like my videos, then you like my videos. If you think my videos are stupid, then they're stupid idiot. If you think they're the greatest thing since the sliced bread, then you think it's better than sliced bread. I don't know. Do I think my videos are better than sliced bread? Fuck no. Sliced bread is better than my fucking videos. But, I still love my videos no matter what, because they're still entertaining. At least to me. <laughs> Anyways, let's just review this. Gotham Seasons 1 and 2. Oh my fucking god. This show. Okay, first of all, okay. I remember when I had the, Okay, thank god. I didn't discover- I did not discover this show. Until season one was beginning. Until season one was almost, I think, almost done. Uh, and then it went to Netflix. And then I'll bench watch the fuck out of it. Um, once I heard there was a Gotham TV show, I was like, I fucking dream come true. I'm watching it. Then there was people that were complaining. Oh, why is Bruce a kid? Oh, I want to know Batman. I don't want to know about Bruce Wayne. I can rant about that all day just alone. I can literally make separate videos of me ranting each individual thing that people have pissed poor on before the show even came out or before even season one was even finished. I could understand though. In the beginning, this show was just going to be like a normal cop show. It was. You can see from season one. It's, of course it was going to be like that with Jim Gordon. And sometimes Bruce Wayne will come in and then in, in and out. And at first, people didn't like that. People were like, why would you do that? And you have Bruce Wayne there. We don't want to know about Jim Gordon. We want to know about Bruce. So they were like, oh, but I thought you guys didn't want to know about Bruce. I thought you just wanted to know about Batman. So we decided to make it to, you know, Commissioner Gordon. And then the fans were like, well, just make it about everybody then. Then they were like, all right, fine then. Fuck you. We'll make it about everybody. So here you go. <laughs> There's your little history of, well, a little fake history and me a little bit sprinkled in. Come on, I had to embellish a little bit. Come on, guys. But still, that's how it basically kind of happened. Um, and Gotham has become one of the best shows on TV, in my opinion. There's some people out there that criticize this show saying that it's flaw. Why does it pay you much to the 60s? And why the fuck do people complain about the 60s Batman? Oh, it 
It's the colorized Batman. It's the stupid Batman. It's the Adam West Batman. Are you shitting me? Are you kidding me? All I have to say is that Adam West Batman is actually fucking entertaining. He is so entertaining that I can watch that Batman all day and and ignore the other ones. Except for the anime version of Batman because I will actually put those two in the same room and just pick their brains all day. But um, <laughs> that's just me as a fan. But um, and to me as a fan, I would love to grab the Batman from the 60s and grab the Dark Knight Joker, put them in the room together, and see what will happen. Oh my god, magic. Magic will happen, people. Most people will be like, are you fucking kidding me? That Joker will destroy Batman. Oh, say isn't so. I would love to fucking see it. <laughs> are you kidding me? 60s Batman meets Heath Ledger's Joker. Oh my god. And imagine, and imagine Christopher Nolan's Batman meeting Cesar Romero's Joker. Or Jack Nicholson's Joker. I'm sorry. These fan things, I can't. I can't. But let's just get started with the show. This is, this, this, this is why I love the show. Because of fan theories and all this shit. You can just think of awesome stuff because of this show. Thank you for Gotham. Thank you, Fox, for bringing this show. Thank you for crying out loud. Like, don't cancel this show. Don't. 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 Just don't. Finish it when it finishes. Let the story play out and let it end. Because I don't want this show to end. I'll be very disappointed if it ends. But continue on. Season 1. Season 1 of Gotham is... In my opinion, all right, let's get to the acting. The acting in season one is not that bad. There are some hiccups. There is. There, there, there is. I'm not going to admit it's all bread and butter. It's not. It's not. There are some hiccups. Um, even sometimes in little season two, there's some hiccups. But the reason in season two, the reason most people, the reason they do that is because they're, they're kind of winking to season, um, well, not to season, he kind of weak into the 60s version, and obviously season 3 kind of did that too, and I will explain that later with, well actually I probably won't explain it, but the whole 60s thing, it kind of, the, when Penguin and, well, basically when, when Nick was trying to kill Penguin, it kind of reminded me of the 60s, you know, when um, Penguin was trying to, I mean what Nick was trying to do to Penguin, you know, the ice is going to break, and then all of a sudden, ice is going to fall on you. And it's like, the ice is going to melt, acid falls on you, reminds me of the 60s Batman classic. I don't know why, it just does. Um, but it still can put in any universe, that's the thing. That's why I love the 60s Batman. Put that in a dark universe, shit, you have anything that you want. But anyways, this is obviously the introduction to everybody. There are some, there are some flaws, obviously, but the thing is, yes, it does its own thing, and... Embrace it, to be honest. Oh, I don't want to embrace this shit. It's something new. Like the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Like the Tim Burton Batman movies. Those were all different. Like the Batman animated series. Like that was different from the movie. Is that just me? Am I the only one thinking this? There's different iterations to Batman. Always. There's always going to be different iterations to Batman. The only thing that's the same about Batman is his origins that his parents got killed. Or maybe he did. Those are my only two origins. Um, anything else could be twisted. Not twisted like in Sick and Disgusting, but twisted into its own thing. It could still be this character, but this character could have a name. That it never had. Most people got pissed off at that. And I will mention that character soon. Um, fuck it. Let's just say it right now. Um, Jerome. When people were like. Why is the guy that's going to be the Joker called Jerome? Why isn't he called Jack Napier? Or why does he even have a name to begin with? And then everyone started embracing him. And loving him. And then he got killed. And people were like. What the hell just... Why did you kill him off? And the thing is, 
we get that to season two. In season one, everyone in season one is pretty decent. They're really good. Butch, Tabitha, literally, um, Barbara, Jim Gordon, Alfred, hands down, fucking awesome. Bruce Wayne looks like Bruce Wayne. If I saw that kid in the street, I would have been like, that's Bruce Wayne. That is Bruce Wayne, my friend. I don't care what you said. That is Bruce Wayne. And that right there was Alfred. Oh my God, so please don't kick my ass. Literally, like that. That's how much I love these characters right here. These characters are amazing. And most people are like, well, you do. the reason you like this Alfred is because he's a badass. But look at the other iterations of Alfred. Look at the 60s Alfred. That 60s Alfred actually can kick ass. Yeah, he actually can defend himself. When Joker went to the Bruce Wayne's house, actually, yeah, that actually happened. Wow, how many times we see that? That never happens in Batman. Maybe if people pay close attention to the 60s, they actually would be like, wow, they actually did stuff that the comic books did later, and so did the movies. I'm like, whoa, no shit. God, I feel like the 60s Batman gets a bad rap, but the thing is, it's magic. The 60s Batman is magic. It is. It's fucking magic. Because everyone, everyone that's a fan of Batman, that writes the comic books, that makes the movies, looks back at that. No? Bullshit. Bullshit. What did Tim Burton have to look at before they made the Tim Burton Batman? There was no other movies before Batman. There were other movies, yeah, but the more, the more that was more famous was the 60s. So obviously they had to look at the 60s version and see how they, they could have done differently with that. Do we want to go with that or do we want to go in the gritty version of the, of the comic book? And yes, times were changing. So there you go. In this series, origins happen. You start to know people that you always see, already cared about. But you start knowing them more. And you wonder, you start to think to yourself, why did I even like this character to begin with? But anyways, these, these characters, I mean, you get your origins of Penguin. You get your origins of Enigma a little bit, which is all, all awesome how it ends with season one. Oh, it's just perfect how they end with Enigma in season one. Just Perfect. Just like, you, you just, you have to clap. It's just perfect the way that they just like embrace um, the Riddler right there at the end of the of, of season one. It's just beautiful. Um, and obviously at the end two of season one, Bruce Wayne and trying to find out um, how, trying to find out what's his father hiding or anything like that in his, um, in the library. And he finds a remote. And it opens a cave. And most people are like, oh my god, it's going to be the bat, the bat Cave soon. It could be. I mean, it's not that big of a cave, first of all. Who knows, maybe it is the, the biggest cave that we've ever seen. But to, to be honest, when they first went in, it doesn't really look that big. Um, even when they put the machines in and all that, it, did, it still didn't look really that big. <laughs> uh, who knows, there's probably different rooms in there. Um, but anyways... Um, that was cool. Um, and then the introduction to Jerome again. Oh my fucking god! It's just, it, it it's just hands down amazing. The guy that plays Jerome is freaking amazing, hands down. If he ever decides to do a movie of the Joker, like if if Hollywood decides to get, hey, we need a new Joker, and we'll be like, hey, this guy did the Joker in Gotham. Let's put him in a movie. And it's like, yeah, why not? He's done the role. Why don't I do it again? You know? And I would love to see this guy play more Joker roles in the future. Why not? Let him do an anime. You know? I'm dead serious. I can see this I can see this guy go so many places just with the Joker character. You know? And the thing is he has grabbed other Joker elements, obviously. And then when he spoiler alert. When he dies and then comes back, he does something else with his voice too because he's been stabbed in the throat. Most people be like, oh, his voice is kind of dim and all that. No shit. No shit. He's been stabbed in the fucking throat. Oh, but he came back. Who's, who gives a... Oh, yeah. And? And the thing is, 
before when people were coming back, they were like, alright, alright, stop. Alright, guys, stop bringing people back. And it's like, really? This is, what, what, what's this? This is not the Marvel Universe. This is, what, what, what's this? What's this? Oh, yeah, this is the motherfucking DC Universe, bitch. Meaning that put that motherfucker in the Lazarus pit and come back up. But the only thing is with the Lazarus pit, you only get crazier. Which is different with the Joker. He goes into the Lazarus pit, comes out normal. Then he gets crazy once Batman comes back. Look at that. <laughs> so, uh, Gotham Season 1 is freaking, I think it's good. You get this woman right here, which is Will Smith's wife, which is, to be, to be honest, she's really attractive. And she plays Fish Mooney. You will hate this character first. Then you will start to love this character. You will start to love Fish Mooney. I had never felt, I never thought I would love, uh, I mean, I would never thought in my wildest years and dreams that I would hate a character so much and then all of a sudden just be like, I like you. I really, really like you. Like, I don't want you to die. Don't die. And if you did, fuck. I mean, Tabitha, you can die. To be honest, I think Tabitha should have died in season two, but we get to that soon. <laughs> but yeah, I really think that it, Fish Mooney should. But the thing is, I love this. I just love this so much. Fish Mooney falls into water. Fish, she she can swim. She was, she is is a survivor. And the thing is, with also with um Gotham season three, what did Penguin said to the um no not Penguin? What did Riddler say to the Penguin? Penguins eat fish. I love that. Those little things right there, those little hints, I love it. I just love it. Like, just with the fish Mooney sign, every time, you know, when they show a place, it shows a picture of a fish. Love that. When it shows a picture of um, the, um, the um, penguins area, it shows an umbrella. I fucking love that. I love it so damn much. The attention, the attention to detail is great in this series and these two series and season three. It's just that good, in my opinion. And uh, let's just talk about season two. Season two? Oh my god, it starts with a fucking bang with Jerome again. It is with the maniacs and everything. And, and then we get this new character that's literally Tabitha's brother. And he's trying to get Bruce Wayne. And he's trying to be part of, and he's part of the Court of Hours and everything. It's like, oh my fucking god, this is like... Oh, this is, it becomes more juicy and juicy and the more you peel in the layers and layers and layers and layers because it's, you're grabbing it from the comic books and the more you pull it, you be like, oh my god, juicy, 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 that's all you get is just juice after juice. Mm. Oh, I love season two. I love season two so, so much. Oh, there are so many shows that I... They have seasons that I just adore. I don't know why. Sometimes I can watch that season through, through my whole life. Like, um, like Katara, season two. The Spirit, I can watch that all, all day. I'm dead serious. And for the last Elbend of season one, I can watch that all day because the animation in season one when it's, when they, when Aang and Zuko are fighting, it lo I mean, not Zuko, but when Aang and Zuko, yes, when they're partnering up and they're fighting, you know, the Fire Nation, it's like, oh my fucking god, it's fu the animation looks beautiful and it looks great here. It's not animated or anything, but the visuals looks great. It lo really looks good. I love it. I love how they pay homage to, you know, the, the, um, the Godfather days, basically, you know, not, like, if you look at the movie Godfather, you can see how the visuals are, and then if you look at Gotham, you'd be like, wow, you know, it, it kind of pays homage to one of those, like, those things, you know, it, and it's amazing, just amazing how the visuals are, and it's amazing how they got these characters to not be, not, it's amazing how these characters stand out with the vi visuals, it's amazing, it literally is amazing, in my opinion. Season 2, yes, it has flaws, again. Again, this show has flaws. But, it, it is so much fun, guys. I never had so much fun with a fucking goddamn show. And the thing is, everyone agrees with this. Everyone. Gotham, despite sometimes being what it is, it leaves you 
suspenseful at the end. Every episode. That's what makes you come back. That's how you do it, people. You don't. I guess you have to be good and all that. But if you have a little bit of flaws, you you know we can you can come back from that. From the endings that you put every fucking episode, man. It's like oh, you just want to be like oh my god, what's gonna happen next episode? That's what Gotham does. And oh, I fucking love these. I fucking love these. I love these shows. I love these shows. I love it so much. Um. I'm sorry. And the thing is, Gotham Season 2 is amazing. Again, um, I, I keep forgetting his name. Um, Tabitha's brother. Fuck, I keep forgetting his name. I always forget his name. I don't know why. I don't know why. But even though he's the main fucking character and he's trying to kill Bruce Wayne, the Batman. Uh, but either way, he blows up, literally. Um, it's just so cool because everything in Gotham becomes chaos. And then when he gets to season three, it be, it just, Gotham's dying. Like, you, 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 you get season one, it's breathing. Season two, it's having a heart attack. Season three, it's dead. Season three, it, it died. It literally died. That's it. And the only way it can come out through the ashes is the Dark Knight. There you go. And in season three, Bruce is is becoming it. He's becoming it. Oh god, I just love it. I just love it. Um, season two, the way it ended is magnificent. But the thing is, it's the biggest flaw of season three. And for season two. And I'm not going to talk about it too much. But you guys know what I'm talking about. It is the biggest what the fuck moments. It's awesome. But when you go to season three, it's like, who is that? Who is that guy? What? I mean, uh, did you just show these characters for the sake of showing these characters? Because they were not supposed to bring back Jerome. They did not want to bring back Jerome. But the fans screamed. They begged. They wanted Jerome back because the character, the guy that played Jerome was so good at it. He was so good. He was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we, we complain and everything, but you know what? People embrace him. People embrace the new Joker. People embrace Jerome as the Joker. And then when people, and then uh, when he died, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, his spirit is through everywhere, and then eventually most people didn't like that because it was like a copycat of the Joker. What the fuck? At first, at first, I didn't think of the copycat at first, but when I was like, "Oh, okay, it's like a virus," like what he said, we will all spread like a virus. I fucking love that. Um, it makes sense because if you play, you know, Batman, um, Arkham Knight, he is spread like a virus. Even Batman is a Joker. Uh, not full fledged Joker, but he's turning into the Joker. A lot of people already the Joker in, in Batman on the Dark um, Knight. Not the Dark Knight. Uh, Arkham Knight. Thank you, Arkham Knight. Um, but I haven't beat that game, but that concept alone should be its own fucking movie, in my opinion. It's it, To me, it's it's fucking good. Um, most people might be like, eh, it's, it's stupid. I'm like, but you get to see the Joker. And you get to see people how to... And you get to see people be like the Joker. And the thing is, once you see the, how the Dark Knight is, I mean, the Dark Knight, I keep saying that. If you see how Arkham Knight is, every person is a Joker. Every person is the Joker. Every time Batman sees the, sees the person acting like the Joker, he sees, he doesn't see that person acting like the Joker. He sees the Joker. That's amazing, mainly because the Joker is in his head also, but still, that's amazing. That is fucking amazing. And for the show to do that, is, is fucking cool. To have Mr. Freeze, awesome. Mad Hatter, awesome. I'm sorry. It was fucking amazing to see those guys. I I love the story of Victor Freeze. It's tragic, it's sad. And the thing is, he could have saved his wife, but he killed his wife. He saved her by killing her. That's sad. If you haven't watched Game Theory on that, oof. Fucking awesome. Just awesome. So, it's, yeah, this, this whole 
This whole series is fucking great. I love Gotham. Ugh, I can't breathe. Because Gotham is just awesome. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about this series? Do you guys hate it? Do you guys love it? Tell me why you hate it. Tell me why you love it. Gotham Season 1 and 2 could drain you. And when you think about it, it could drain you too. It's just, it's really, really fun. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Be safe. Don't be a nagging drunken elbower. You know? Don't come yell at me to do the dishes if you've been banging a clown in the next one. Just for Scarecrow signing off. Have a nice day.